Hello everyone, this is Rohan Baird and I'm here today to give you the lowdown on the National Coal Index that looks set to transform the Indian coal sector in a major way. The government has put up 38 coal blocks for commercial mining in view of utilizing the existing resources and reducing dependency on imports. By removing the end user restriction, the government has amended the existing auction process to bolster private participation. So what are the changes that the government is seeking to bring in? Well, one of the key changes is the introduction of a national coal index that would form the basis of determining the revenue share of the state governments from the mines to be auctioned. Now, what precisely is the NCI? Well, the proposed national coal index is a price index developed by computing weighted combination of prices from three sales channels. A, the notified prices of CIL, WCL and SCCL for all grades of coking and non-coking coal. B, CIL auction prices for those grades and C, import prices of coal. Thereafter, these are categorized into five sub-sectors in order to derive grade-wise prices for coking and non-coking coal. It is important to know here that the base year for NCI is 2018, which means that the prices for that year is the basis for calculation of NCI. To further elaborate on how the NCI would work, after computing the weightage for various price channels, the coal ministry would declare the grade-wise prices of coal in order to evaluate the monthly amount payable by a successful bidder for the coal mined from the acquired blocks. So how is the monthly payment determined then? Well, the monthly payment is determined as a product of A, the final offer, B, the total quantity on which the statutory royalty is payable for the month, and C, the notional price or the actual price, whichever is higher. Now let us turn our attention to the various implications of the NCI. The NCI exercise is aimed at benchmarking prices as it would lead to proper valuation of the coal based on various price channels. However, there are some concerns among the participants. The representative prices highlighted under NCI clearly exceeds the CIL notified prices. Therefore, the sale of coal from these acquired mines would always be at the risk of rejection as the buyers would prefer lower price coal supplied by CIL. Moreover, concerns have also been raised regarding the computation of bands in terms of GCV, which would unnecessarily impact the prices of lower grade coal due to a rise in weightage on account of import of coal of the higher grades. Considering the middle tier grades for non-coking coal, the volume of imported coal falling under the grades G7 to G9 is quite large and which significantly pushes the weightage of coal higher. Consequently, the rise in price for G7 coal driven by higher imports from DRI and associated industries would adversely affect the prospective bidders having a block of G14 coal as they would have to pay more due to the deviation in the import component of higher GCV coal. Given the complex mechanism of the NCI, necessary steps must be taken to simplify the process, as participants interested in long-term investments are facing difficulty in deriving a financial model to evaluate whether the acquired coal block would be financially viable.